The goals that we have to decarbonize the sector are ambitious, but they are possible. The members of the International Maritime Organization stand in front of a historic decision. A regulatory framework for the greenhouse gas emission is the only way forward. Now is not the time to doubt. It is the time for action. The shipping industry is responsible for moving 80% of everything we use. With this significant impact on how the world consumes goods and services comes responsibility. The industry needs a strategic approach to make a real impact and to reach its decarbonization goals. This approach is global regulation to solve one of the biggest challenges the industry is facing in its efforts to lower emission, the price gap. The biggest challenge of shipping's decarbonization is the cost, so the, the high cost of the low carbon fuels, which is typically two to three times uh, the conventional fuels. And who should pay for those costs? And you could argue that you and I should pay because it's actually our consumption that drives the emissions. And when you take the cost of the fuels and pass it on all the way to the consumer, for the vast majority of products, it's completely negligible. For a pair of shoes or for a laptop or a t-shirt, we are talking a few cents, not even dollars or euros. Now the problem is that the market itself is not effective in doing that because there are simply too many steps in the value chain. So for example, if the fuels is two times more expensive, we get stuck with that cost, we, we simply cannot afford that. And that's why we need regulation because regulation can do exactly that. It can just make a level playing field for all so that everyone picks up the cost. We would actually have something uh, that could accelerate really fast. Different actors in the value chain, from shipping lines, fuel and infrastructure providers and logistic customers, have their own decarbonisation goals. Global regulation ensures they can work together in a levelled playing field, advancing the decarbonisation of the entire industry. Nestle is committing to achieving net zero carbon emissions across the entire value chain by 2050. This commitment means a significant reduction in our scope 3 zero emissions, which include transportation and logistics. For Nestle, clear regulations enable us to align our supply chain strategies with global sustainability goals, ensure compliance and build consumer trust. Customers want brands that proactively incorporate sustainability in every aspect of the process, from sourcing to delivery. MERS Eco Delivery supports our decarbonization efforts, enable us to make significant progress in our scope 3 zero emission targets while ensuring transparency, traceability through our supply chain. Nestle is open to a fuel mix, as long as it aligns with our sustainability and traceability principles. A specific type of low emission fuel is important as transparency, scalability and environmental performance are a key criteria in our decision-making process. For advancing the decarbonisation journey, different low emission fuels are needed. Some of these fuel technologies are available today, others are more on the horizon. So there's a lot of discussion in the shipping industry about which is the, is the fuel of the future and, and it would be very nice if we could appoint the winning candidate, but, uh, but that's unfortunately not the case. At Maersk we are we're quite fuel agnostic, we don't have any special love for, for any one molecule, we want something that is safe, that we can operate and that is cost effective. Firstly exploring methanol, which we still think is a great fuel operationally cost-wise. We have now also made some time charter orders for methane or LNG and we are also looking into uh, ammonia to see if that should also uh, uh, end our fleet uh, in the future. All our new builds uh, will be uh, dual fuel and they will be enabled to run on some green energy source. It means that we constantly need to be on our toes and evaluate what is the right technology for the next uh, new building that we are launching. And that's the work that we're doing in-house and also taking, of course, a lot of uh, inspiration and data and knowledge from the market. And that guides us in taking the best and most informed decisions. We believe the future fuel mix will be diverse. Uh, already now we see that LNG, or more accurately methane, is already widely spread. The technology is on more than a thousand ships already. 
and the fuel is available in many parts around the world. We also see a significant uptake in methanol. A lot of the investment decisions are being taken to ensure the supply of, the, of methanol is available. Actually, more than 200 ships already now are built or are on order for methanol. In the future, these fuels are here to stay. While different low-emission fuels like methanol are available today, they are scarce in supply. At the same time, shipping is competing with other industries to get the fuel, as we all have similar sustainability objectives. To achieve the decarbonisation targets for the entire ocean fleet, Maersk needs 10 to 20% green fuels in the total fuel mix by 2030. Through a long-term offtake agreement, we have so far secured 50% of the fuel supply is dual fuel methanol vessels will require in 2027. Low emission fuels have a number of challenges. The high cost is one thing, and related to that, a big problem is that there is no liquid market for these type of fuels and these type of molecules. And that means when you are developing a project and you want to, to get financing for a project, there's a lot of uncertainty in, in who will actually buy your product. And when there is such uncertainty, then it's very unlikely to get your project uh, financed. And that's where we, uh, as Maersk, have decided that we want to try and do our share to get these markets kickstarted by actually going in and taking the commercial risk on a number of, of large projects. The long-term agreement can help us to the呃马士基作为托塔行业的这个引领者呃与金峰签订了战略长期合作协议这也是坚定了金峰科技在绿色甲醇这个新的燃料工业体系里面进行长期投入的一个决心绿色甲醇发展的根本性的驱动因素啊